I feel there, Duncan, we just had podcast magic. <laughs> we have just had podcast magic. Oh, God. <laughs> Hi, I'm chef, restaurant owner and music fan, Paul Ainsworth, and this is Knives, Forks and Tunes, the podcast where we ask the all-important questions, dream dinner party menu, playlists, and of course, who's invited. Every episode's cooking tips and party playlists are available in the show's description. My guest this week is pop icon, Duncan James. Singer, actor, TV presenter, and of course, member of the Brit Award-winning 16 million record-selling band, Blue. Before going on to star as Ryan Knight in Hollyoaks and forging a successful West End career with leading roles in Chicago, Legally Blonde and The Rocky Horror Show. And if that wasn't enough, he's recently been showing off his cooking skills as a contestant in the latest series of Celebrity MasterChef. Duncan, welcome to Knives, Forks and Tunes. Paul, it's a pleasure to be here, mate. Thank you for having me. It's no. an honour. Well, look, my, my first question is, I mean, 16 million records like, worldwide. You must have walked out on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people. But how was the kitchen of Celebrity MasterChef? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, what? I, I, I was probably more nervous walking into that kitchen of yeah. MasterChef than I have done any single gig with my band Blue. The fear of walking in and seeing John Tyrone and, and, and Greg Wallace just standing there with these steely faces... It was horrible. I mean, it, I was I was literally petrified. Um, and I thought I'd go in and there'd be all smiles because before you film, you just think it'll all be, you know, hey, mate, you all right? Nice to see you. Yeah. None of that. It was just like blue steel like that. I was like, hello. <laughs> Nothing. I was like, oh, my God, this is like full on. And then, of course, we got um, the first Greg, challenge. Greg's a nice breaker, isn't he? Greg's lovely. <laughs> yeah. Greg, Greg softens the tone, doesn't he? Yeah. Bit, like... Greg's got a bit more of a... <laughs> Smiley face. Let's yeah. just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've I've judged a few um, Master Chefs. Most I've done a celebrity Master Chef recently, and I, I got to say, you know, for myself, who's competed on professional cooking show like Great British Menu, right? When you're doing it, as you know, that's my job. Walking into a kitchen um, and cooking with all the cameras and knowing it, especially if you really want to do well in it, it is such a daunting thing. I think for me, it was more the fact that I practiced a lot at home and, you know, you get your timings right and you, you're good because you haven't got that pressure. But when you're in that kitchen and you've got the judges walking around you and you've got the film crew filming everything yeah. and you can see a, like a, the clock counting down, it just puts you on a next level of anxiety. Well, for me, I suffer with anxiety anyway. So for me, it's just all of a sudden, everything that I'd learned at home, everything that I prepared went out the window and it's just, you make silly little mistakes and then... You just heart is racing, your anxiety's going, and then you're just like, oh my god, I can't, I can't cope. And I found myself like flapping around that kitchen like a headless chicken. I mean, don't, I did enjoy it. It was just blooming stressful. Don't you wish an hour went that fast in the gym? I know, right? <laughs> like how how does the time go like that? Like look, you literally have an hour, and it's like then you have five minutes. Five minutes. I know it's <laughs> mad. I think for me, I didn't realize that that the pressure of it was going to be that strict and you know when you watch I've done a lot of TV shows and you know they say an hour on TV a lot of shows it's like mm, you know give or take two hours yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> and it's edited down to make it look but that show MasterChef it really is an hour and if you run out of time you run out of time there is no lenient you know there's no there's no extra help behind the cameras it's none of that going on it is very very strict um, and I didn't think it was going to be that strict. I thought, oh, I'll be all right. We'll probably get down 20. But, or then let's finish off what we're doing. But no, nope, time's up. Serve <laughs> it now. It's like, really? Oh, my God. Nah, well done, because ta it, takes, it takes guts to do that. It really does. Right, I'm going to uh, like get into this, right? But I'm going to give you some little quick fire questions, okay, right? Nothing, right? Nothing too complicated, quite, like, quite funny. See how you get on with these. Okay. So we'll start off nice and light. Sweet or savoury? Oh, savoury. Savoury, yeah. Yeah, ever since okay. a little boy, I've been savoury, yeah. 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 I'd much rather have a sausage roll than a nice bun. Right, okay. <laughs> That's a good comparison. <laughs> That's a good comparison. <laughs> HP or ketchup? Ketchup. Nice. Do, not, do, do, you, do you find, like, personally... Yeah. HP on a sausage sandwich, ketchup on a bacon sandwich... How you feeling? Mm, I get that. I can appreciate that. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But I've, I've, 
when I was younger, I didn't like ketchup at all. I didn't yeah. like salt, ketchup on anything. I, as I've got older, I've appreciated the ketchup more. The HP thing, I never got into it. No. I can appreciate it, though. Yeah, yeah. But no, 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 no. Lager or bitter? Oh, lager. Yeah. Bitter's just bitter, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> bitter's just bitter, isn't it? <laughs> and McDonald's or Burger King? Ah. Oh. Also, well, Ooh. if you want to go a bit off-piece with this, I'm um, that's allowed. KFC. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Do you know what? That's that seems to be the the Is one. It? Yeah. Listen, you can't beat a bit of fried chicken. What would you have? I okay. This is my KFC order. Routine, order what I love do. it. I I never go on a menu. Yeah. I want like four pieces. Yeah. Of chicken on the bone or off the bone. Dark meat. I don't like the breast. No. I, so you, it's got to be so it's a thigh and a leg. Yeah. Two thighs, two legs. Yeah. Um, and maybe six hot wings. Brilliant. And then I'm good. You are good? And what I've just recently discovered is. The gravy, yeah. you can dip the chicken into the gravy. Oh, so delicious. I've only just got into that during lockdown. That's my, my, I never got into the gravy before. My wife's been on that gravy train for yeah. a long time. I hate the chips at KFC. Yeah. Awful chips. <laughs> yeah. But the gravy, dunk the chicken into the gravy. Bosh, lovely. Nice, nice. Dinner parties. Right. Are you a fan? I love a dinner party. Yeah? Yeah, do you know, I grew up with my mum. I'm a single um, parent child so it's just me and my mum all my life and my mum is very glamorous she loves a dinner party so as a little boy part of our household routine would be my mum would throw dinner parties for her friends and it was just great I used to love it because I was the entertainment factor my mum used to go and make me perform for the the guests after dinner which I used to love because yeah. you know it was my little time to shine and <laughs> um go upstairs and dress up in in her clothes and all sorts of anyway let's not even go there but yeah I uh, I used to have fun at the dinner parties um so yeah growing up it's, it's always been a kind of tradition in my family to have dinner parties and have people around quite a social event and I love it amazing and you cook much I do. Um, I was that kid that was in the kitchen getting under my grandparents' feet as a little kid watching. My grandma used to, she used to very traditional cook. She used to do a lot of English cooking. Every single Sunday we had a roast dinner. Family would come over. She would make Yorkshire puddings with every, um, every Sunday. We didn't, regardless of what meat it was, because she knew that I loved Yorkshire puddings. So I used to watch how she used to make everything, used to, you know, do the batter and everything was home cooked with my grandma she was proper traditional um so i used to just be in the kitchen just fascinated watching really and your grandma is a legend yes yeah, she was yorkshire pudding should be served with every roast yeah this written rule of like beef. just with beef yeah. is ridiculous it should be with everything yeah yeah i love a yorkshire pudding yeah yeah even with fish and chips so i can <laughs> serve a yorkshire pudding with everything bad sausage in a yorkshire yeah. pudding <laughs> isn't that told in the hole almost yes, yeah. yes it is yeah. it is Right, we're going to get started with the dinner party, Duncan. Okay. Alive or dead, fictional or real, it's totally up to you. Like, who do you want at this dinner party before we get to the menu? This is your once-in-a-lifetime dinner party. Okay, well, if I don't invite my mum at the dinner party, I'm in trouble. So yeah. I'll have to have my mum there. Because Our mums, by the way, sound so similar. I would never hear the end of it yeah. if my mum yeah. wasn't there. Um, and you know what? Because I was really close to my grandparents growing up, and they died when I was 21 within six months of each other. And I've not seen, well, obviously, <laughs> not seen them for like 20, 22 years. And I really miss my grandparents. And I would just love to see them again if... If I had an opportunity to bring them back at a dinner party, they'd be there because I think I didn't appreciate the love and everything they gave me when I was young. Cause you know, you're just like, Oh grandma, stop going on at me or, yeah. you know, when you're younger, but now being older, I really, 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 really miss them. And I just wish I could have an opportunity just to have a chat with them, you know, yeah. being more of an, an adult. Also, I think it would be really fun to have Marilyn Monroe because I've always really? been a little bit, infatuated by her yeah. I just think she's just one of those artists that was just an enigma and just not only just beautiful but her story and how she died and everything it was just she's one of those just captivating legends isn't she yeah and how she became famous and how she dealt with it all and everything she got up to and I think she'd just be fascinating to talk to and and really nice to look at yeah very. Yeah. Like, very. I she can appreciate that, being a gay man, you know. Yeah, and would Gran and Grandad get on well with her? I don't know. I mean... This is the bit I love, is then, like, how does... Because you, you have your favourite guest, don't we? Yeah. We're going to come on to more of yours. But then it's like, what would the what would the chemistry be like in the in the room? 
That's a very interesting one, actually. I mean, my grandparents would definitely know who Marilyn Monroe was because obviously being that generation, but I don't know what they would have thought of her. I mean, they were very conservative, my grandparents, and my grandfather was a colonel in the army. I mean, he probably would fancy her, but yeah. my grandmother would probably be kicking him under the table. <laughs> so, yeah, one of those ones. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, I think she'd be great. And also I'd like to add... Um, a bit of Graham Norton into the mix. Yeah. Because I think he's just a really interesting man who's got lots of stories to tell. I think he would keep the dinner party going. He'd be, he's funny. I've met Graham loads of times and um, I just think he's a really nice guy. I think he's, I think he's fantastic. I've, I've, never, I've never met him. I love when I get the chance to, to watch the Graham Norton show. I think the guests that go on there are just unbelievable, but I, just how fast he is. Yeah, that's what is. I like because I, I, I always enjoy watching people who are at the top of their game in any in any sort of sector in any line of work and watching him do his thing and how fast he is and quick he is yep. and the way he just holds. I mean, that must be such a difficult thing to do to holding hold, court, yeah, holding court to all those different personalities. So yep. I think that's a brilliant. So that's why I'd have him there because he, he's like the glue to everybody. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. It's always good when you got someone there that if it goes a bit quiet or a bit awkward, he'd be good, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. And also, he's, he's got lots of stories to tell. And yeah. he's probably got loads of gossip about so many celebs and stuff. He'd be yeah. like, oh, tell me about that one, or tell me about that one. So he's quite a good person to have yeah. at a dinner party, I yeah. think. Um, and I also threw in there a bit of a random one, because yeah. you said I could have a fictional one, right, yeah. as well. I'd have a bit of Superman there. Now, I Spandex, muscles. Yeah. And actually, can you just give us a little fly around after dinner you yeah. know what I mean it'd be yeah. quite fun you just hop on your back and which Superman go. Duncan which one? Oh, which one well not the original one because I didn't fancy him no 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 do you like the the one that was with Terry Hatcher oh yeah he was quite cute yeah, yeah I did like him how do you know my type <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> what was his <laughs> the Terry Hatcher one what was his name Dean, Dean Kane. Kane, yeah, Dean. I'd have a bit of Dean Kane. Yeah, he was. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> he was, listen, you can't beat a man in a bit of spandex, a little bit of muscles, and and got superpowers. It's like, hey, what so we've got do? Dean Kane and in costume. No, I want actually the real Superman. Yeah, but that's what I mean. So we got like Dean Kane at the at okay. your party at- in costume. In the Superman costume. As long as he can be Superman and make me fly. Right, okay. Yeah, love it. I, I see. Yeah, you're going next level. You're going actually the Superman who's in the film that's I want, flying I, I everything. Want, I want yeah. the, Superman. the Superman. I don't care if it's Dean K- As long as he's tall, dark, handsome with muscles and he can take me on his back and fly me around, around the town or whatever for a bit. I mean, that's great. <laughs> let's, just, let's just pop up there and come back. I mean... Wouldn't it be amazing to be able to fly like that? It would be amazing because I've got your last guest right in front of me and it's just (laughs) then you're just going to go in with this one and it's just like, this is an awesome dinner party. (laughs) And my last guest, it's a bit random. Well, I love her because um, not only is she an incredible actress, but she's traditionally British and she's just, I don't know, she's just one of those incredible people that has probably got so many amazing stories to tell and I just adore her and that is the Dame Judi Dench. Phenomenal. She's amazing. Phenomenal. She's absolutely amazing. So Duncan, and I know she. Was, I know my grandparents would get on with her as well. Yeah, they would love her. Yeah, uh, she was actually due to come to the restaurant um, before lockdown, and that is like one. And then obviously, lock, the first lockdown came, um, and I was so excited. Yeah, to have her. You know, honoured to have her come yes. to the restaurant and stuff. But uh, yeah, I uh, I see exactly what you mean. She would be fantastic. And she's the kind of person that when she walks in the room, everybody stands up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's just that next yeah. level of complete respect for. And um, I'm a huge fan of her work and having a little dabble in theatre and acting myself. You know, when you see somebody like Judy Dench on stage and you just watch her performances, you're just enamoured and, and in awe. She's just incredible. And yeah. I love her. Yeah. So we're going to recap for, okay. everyone, for everyone listening. So we've got the most important people in the house, mum and grandparents. Yeah. Love those choices. Marilyn Munro. Yep. Graham Norton. <laughs> Superman as Superman. Not the not Superman. De- not Dean Kane just rocking up. No. Like Superman. Superman. Flying around whilst <laughs> whilst we're having uh, dinner. And uh Judy Dench. Yeah, what a collective bunch of people, hey? It's awesome. Awesome. Dress code? Just wear whatever you want. Just wear whatever just you want. Be Chilled. Yeah, yeah, just like whatever floats your boat. 
Right, we're going to move on to your starter. Okay. What are the guests eating? Well, I'm a little bit flawed if there's any vegans in the house because um, I'm not very vegan friendly, I'm afraid. I do like my meat, Paul. Yeah. And I do like my fish and my seafood and anything that comes out of a shell, I yeah. just love. Yeah. So, unfortunately, sorry, Sorcha, my menu is going to be a bit meaty and a bit weird and wonderful. So, my starter is probably one of my favourite things to eat. It's snails, escargot. Yeah. Lots of garlic butter, yeah. some fr- uh, fresh, straight out of the oven, crispy sourdough bread. You know, that nice when it breaks off. Oh, and you can just dip it into that butter, garlic butter from the escargot. You put a little snail on it and eat it. It's just for me, that is just, I am in orgasmic heaven. Nice. I actually kind of just was gazing into your eyes then as you were, um, as you were saying I was that. imagining you, it. You just... explained that so beautifully. That taste of that garlic and I don't know, I don't, do you know what, it's really weird because I was nine years old and my mum took me to Jersey with her mate and um, we were sat in this restaurant outside and my mum's friend ordered snails and I was absolutely mortified that she was going to eat one of these snails and I just thought it was the most disgusting thing ever and she said to me, don't knock it unless you try it and I said, I'm not going to eat, that's a snail, like, and my mum said, go on, try it. And I was like, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't. Eventually, I gave in to the will, <laughs> my willpower was weak. I gave in and I, I ate my first ever snail. And after that moment, you loved I it. loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Now, sometimes I'll try and bring mm. something to the, to the recipes. That is a recipe you just don't mess about with. It's delicious. Mm. Uh, I think all I would say to people listening is, like you, um, I think everybody's first impressions are like, what? Ew. Snails? That's yeah. disgusting. But you could say that about so many foods. Yep. And, you know, like something like that as well, it's really sustainable, which is so important now. Right. To be eating, you know, things like that. And simply with garlic butter, with loads of fresh parsley chopped into mm, it as well. Yeah. Um, and then once you've eaten all the snails, you're just left with all that lovely butter mopped up with that sourdough. Oh. That is that is a wonderful, wonderful dish. Oh, you got me salivating. <laughs> Tell me, I w- I'm interested to know, actually. Yeah. Is there any health benefits in snails? I mean, is it protein Definitely. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely a protein. It's lean. You know, you're, you, it's not, you know, it's not super fat. Right. And and again, you know, with how the world is now with over farming, overfishing, you know, we're going to see a lot more of that. We're going to be moving into kind of like, you know, for people that still want that protein. I know it seems bonkers to say it now, but there's many places now that are like serving anything from, you know, insects to ants to... Wow. So uh, you'll see definitely in our lifetime, food like that becoming more like more available, wow. uh, more approachable and stuff. And it's, you know, it's down to chefs to kind of like, you know, talk about these things. It's not for everyone, but, you know, it's uh, it's it's definitely a great choice. And snails is very classic. It's not something that's new. It's been around in yeah. French bistros for many, many years. But, you know, escargot in garlic butter, loads of parsley and um, mopped up with some beautiful, like, hot Warm. bread. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. What's that chef that is all, he's always doing snail stuff, isn't he? What's he called? Heston. Heston. Snail porridge. He loves his snail, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And have you had the snail porridge? I haven't. It's incredible. Is it? So it's, it's, I know it sounds weird because you think it's not porridge like you would necessarily think at breakfast. So right. like where it might be a bit thick, a bit kind of like warm you up in the winter mm. or, you know, before training. It's very much like a risotto. Oh, wow. And he takes kind of that inspiration. So they make like a compound butter, which is like full of like parsley. So when you blitz the parsley, you release the chlorophyll. That's what makes it go super green. Mm. So it's really kind of light, really herbaceous. There's um, almonds and Iberico ham chopped finely through Mm. the butter. And then it's topped with shaved like pickled fennel. And it's it's insane. And then obviously the snails are fold through it. So it's like a risotto. Wow. And then it's got this and then you've got this like warm, beautiful snail kind of porridge underneath, and then this lovely shaved pickled fennel on the top. It's insane. Wow. It's absolutely beautiful. I have to go and try it. Yeah. And I love the word herbaceous. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, Duncan. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I've heard that what before. That's what I'm here for. I, I really enjoyed that word. Thank you for herbaceous. That. Yes, yes, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Now, great starter, Duncan. Love it. 
what what would everyone be having to drink? What would you what would you kick things off with? Well, I love and like a little aperitif kind of drink, something with maybe some champagne in it. But champagne for me is a little bit too. I don't know. I'm... Safe. <sighs> I feel like you want to be a bit daring. Yeah. I, listen, apple spritz. Yeah. Bosch. Brilliant. I mean, I, I do enjoy a nice crisp champagne but for me the acidity levels in it it just i can sometimes get a little bit like the bubbles in my tummy i'm a bit like oh i'm not sure how comfortable i am with that but for some reason with a bit of april in it and um a bit of a slice of orange i think it's got is it got soda water in it as well yeah what, yeah, yeah. You know, mix it all it tastes really nice yeah it's lovely it's, it's very great. Italian. Yeah, it is. And it's a great choice because <clears throat> that's quite a rich... What makes that dish rich is that garlic butter. Yeah. So that nice acidity in that drink yeah. is is great choice. Now, this is, a, this is a food, drink and music podcast, Duncan. So I'm going to ask you what we kicking things off with in the world of tunes. I think a nice kind of song to start off with is a good old Michael Bublé track. Yeah. Because I think it's just like nice, easy listening in the background. Michael's got a really lovely uh, tone to his voice. I think everybody appreciates a bit of the Bublé. So I, I reckon the song Everything is a nice starter to warm up. My, I love that song. My people. Do you like it? I like that It's song. a nice song, isn't it? It's yeah. got a nice vibe to it. It's friendly. It's inviting. And it's just easy listening. So we're going to go on to the main courses. So at this point, we've all had snails with garlic butter and sourdough. We're we're about three or four April spritz in. <laughs> we're listening to Michael Bublé. Superman is gracing the skies. Yeah. <laughs> like, Graham's got everyone in stitches. Marilyn's taken her top off. Yeah. She's, yeah. Just, no, she's, she's peeled a level of clothing. I mean, I'm not saying she's naked. I'm just saying, you know, she's got a bit hot. The first come off. Yeah. Your granddad's loving life. Yeah. Your, your grand's kicking him under the table because he's looking at Marilyn. Yeah. And my mum's drunk. Topless, and your mum's drunk, <laughs> looking very glamorous. Yeah, this is shaping up to be it's a brilliant. great dinner party. Where, do you know what? I never, I never asked this actually. Where's the location? Where is everyone? I didn't even think about that. I don't know. You can't ask me that one. I haven't thought about that one. Where would it be? I don't know. Can I? Can I make a suggestion yeah, where you... I think it feels like it would be? Yeah, tell me. I think it feels like it's on on really beautiful white sands. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why. I, do, I and and I, and weirdly, I just feel Mexico's in my mind. Oh, that's really random. I yeah. never would have. Thought. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. Okay. Let I me mean, just have a bit of randomness. I just. I thought wow. it might help. I don't think I've really connected with anything there. I can sense it. You're <laughs> looking at me like weird. But uh, yeah, oh. I was just gonna go white sands in Mexico. <laughs> What, like Tulum or somewhere like that? Or? Cancun. Cancun. Yeah, it's the first thing that's going yeah. wow. into my head. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That that wouldn't be my my, my, po- my uh, first choice, Paul. But <laughs> I can appreciate it. White Sands in Mexico. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Where's a nice place? Um, it could be at your house. No, I want something fabulous and grand and just, I don't know, maybe like one of those big... Oh, what about a nice chateau somewhere in France? Nice. Yeah, lovely. With its own vineyard and, yeah. and, and an array of beautiful wines that you're just able to help yourself to. Yeah. Do what, Duncan, this is what these podcasts are about. I'm getting the measure of you now. Like, now I'm like, yeah, I was way off one night in Mexico. <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> do you know what? France does have some incredible chateaus. I went on a little vineyard tasting holiday once, um, and it was amazing. We went to a place called, is it Alsace and Lorraine, where yeah. the champagne all comes from and stuff yeah and we stayed in this wonderful old chateau and it had its own vineyard and we went on this wine tasting experience and you know apart from being absolutely hammered at the end of the day i had a really lovely time and i'd never done anything like that and for me that was like well it's an old thing to do isn't it it's what your parents do and but i was probably in my what early 30s and i had a really lovely holiday it was just amazing amazing yeah amazing so, main course, talk to me. So, main course, I, as we talked about, I'm not, definitely not a vegan. I love my fish and I love my meat. But for a main course, I'd want to go with something that I really, really love. One of my favourite pieces of meat is a cote de bouffe. Did Lovely. I say that right? Cote de bouffe? Yeah, you did. Cote yeah. de bouffe. Because it's got that bone in it and I love sucking on a bone. Yeah. That could sound rude. 
I'm talking, you know, no. marrow, juicy, no, lovely. No, not, not at all. I've, I'm fully engaged in eye contact with you, and that did not sound weird at all. Do you like sucking a bone? I, I do, of a cop de boeuf. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, hugely. It's yeah. just nice. Yeah, it is, it's, it's delicious. So we, we have, at the moment, we've got a cop de boeuf served medium rare. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about everybody at the dinner party, because some yeah. people might not like it too rare. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just, you can't eat a nice piece of steak that's well done. I mean, it's yeah. just sacrilege, isn't it? You've it gotta, is. It's got to be... It's got to be pink with a little bit of blood running through it, for me anyway. Yeah. I mean, people might think that's disgusting, but yeah. it's so juicy and tender. And what I love about a cut de boeuf is it's got a nice level of fat that runs through it, which, yeah. which makes it really, really, really tasty when you eat it. Yeah. Serve with a nice, something like a celerac puree, um, a nice mashed potato, like maybe like a, I don't know, like a sweet mashed potato, chuck a bit of garlic in it. And then just something simple, like a nice steamed spinach or something, um, or or sautéed spinach or creamy spinach but I'm not too good on the creamy stuff because it doesn't really sit too well in my tummy but yeah. I do love a nice spinach yeah yeah, yeah. earthy that kind of taste to it a nice one it's a great it's a great main course I love I love that cut of meat um, you're absolutely right it's uh, for me it's best to serve pink mm. because like a fillet steak, you can serve that rare, but it's it's quite a lean cut. It only has a little bit of fat going through it, like the marbling through the middle. But yeah. the cut you've chose has got a nice amount of fat, especially yeah. like that that kind of big round circle piece of fat that's right in the middle of the eye, like in the ribeye, yeah, ribeye, like ribeye yeah, and, yeah. and the and that lovely layers of protein and fat on top of it. Oh. It's amazing. So. The benefits, and it'll tip for everyone, the benefits of cooking it, like you said, pink, is you're cooking it for longer. So like a really nice kind of medium. So it's beautifully pink because then that fat will cook and it mm. it won't be kind of like raw and sort of undercooked. So I actually prefer that exactly as you said. And and yeah, and the, the garnish is the celerac puree, the um, sweet potato mash. I'm a big fan of sweet potato. I know sometimes it divides divides people, but I love it. I actually think it's got so much taste it's got a real mm. moorishy taste um sweet potato yeah it has and 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 also i i didn't mention but i'd make a really nice jus to go with it you know like a maybe yeah. like a red wine jus or something like that just something that's really i don't know beefy and yeah and and str i like strong tastes yeah. in my food and yeah. i do love like a gravy but like a no, i wouldn't have a gravy with it, but a jus yeah 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 something that's been reduced down something that's got you know like a nice red wine taste to it as well yeah, I mean, quick, quick sauce to make for that. Exactly like what you're saying. You can buy great stocks now. In And if you really want to go all out, like you're saying, you want to kind of go beyond sort of like ready-made gravy. Yeah, you can generally your butcher will sell you some beef trimmings with that cot de boeuf. Cook those, roast those with lots of shallots, mm. peppercorns, thyme. Uh, garlic, some bay leaf, little bit of rosemary in there, and then some really good red wine. I'm a big believer, and it, it doesn't have to be expensive, but to me, there's no such thing as cooking wine. Mm. It's quite an old fashioned thing that you should never, you should never kind of separate wine into like, well, that's good enough to go with. So, you know, you, you're going to spend probably fifty quid on a cot de boeuf. So why would you have something that's like vinegar? Yeah. So always cook with a wine that you love to drink. Right. And when you say you like strong taste, so you want like a real kind of nice, rich, full-bodied red wine. Yeah. You know, and a little tip, little dash, of, so you want to say like if you put in, I don't know, 500 mil of uh, red wine, reduce that down, and then put 250 mil when you make your sauce, Duncan, um, of port. Oh, really? Like a ruby Ooh. port, like a nice, rich port. To give it a glaze as well. Gives it a, yeah, it mm. gives it a glaze, richens it up, and then it gives you a nice... Mm. It doesn't... It's not overly sweet, but it adds another layer to the to the sauce. Reduce all that down, then in with your stock. That sounds wicked. Yeah. I made... Actually, talking about MasterChef, I did... Um, I got Dish of the Day. Duncan's Dish of the Day. Did you get Dish of the Day? I did. I did a, a really lovely duck dish, and I made yeah. a really nice reduction jus. And uh, yeah, the, the judges really loved it. Yeah, yeah. Still didn't put me through though, did they? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Anyway. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. moving on swiftly. <laughs> I'm not bitter. Um, what are you giving everyone to drink? Uh, well, we talked about a nice full-bodied red wine. Yeah. I think you got it with... With a nice piece of uh, steak, um, you've got to have a nice red wine with it. Yeah. It just... I 
I really like a nice full bodied, really kind of rich, strong tasting red wine. I mean, I, I do like a Chateau Neuf de Pap, something like that, but I don't know. What would you, what's your favorite red wine to go with red meat? What would you choose? Well, red wine is my favorite wine mm. anyway. So um, I love Chateau Neuf de Pap, what you're saying, but I think that you're, for this, you, it sounds like you would love something heavier. Yeah. So you, for me, like a really nice, like strong, kind of powerful Bordeaux. Okay. Um, also, like New World, there's an amazing red which I love called Mirlust. Mm. Um, so M W E R L U S T. They do a white Chardonnay and then they do the red uh, Rubicon. Um, I think it is, and it's it's absolutely beautiful. And then I also love um, there is an amazing vineyard. The name escapes me. Um, it is it's based based in California. Okay, and we've got a few of their wines on the list. And again, I love Californian wines. So, yeah, for, for, for a dish like that, sometimes people, you know, like people's, oh, yeah, red wine and steak, but it just works. It just works. It just yeah. works. And it's and it's at that point of the meal as well where you kind of, you know, you, you're a few April spritz in. So now you're just <laughs> going to level it with a, one of those real big kind of bulb, lovely glasses yes. with a yes. nice, big, heavy red in it. Yes. At this point, it's where you sat back in your chair and it will be... Things are going good. Superman's even calmed down. He's actually, he's actually, he's actually joined everyone at the table now. Yeah, and it's just starting to mellow. It's starting to chill. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, I have a story to tell. I I did a song many many moons ago uh, for the fabulous Andrew Lloyd Webber. It was called "I Believe My Heart." And it did really well in the charts. And I didn't think it was going to do as well. But we were like number one all the way through midweek. And then right at the end, when the charts came out, we got pipped to the post by a song called Call On Me. And I ended up being number two. Um, but it was the song from The Woman in White. And to say thank you for doing the song, Mr. Lloyd Webber, the, the Lord, uh, took me out for dinner. And we went to a fabulous restaurant. And he is a connoisseur of wines. And yeah. he brought out, I can't remember the name of it, but he brought out all these different types of wines and a gorgeous red. And it was obviously a very a nice, expensive one down the, down the list. And we ended up um, having a fabulous night with the Lord. Yeah. And um, it was just wonderful. And he is a big connoisseur of wines as well. And uh, yeah, I just always remember drinking this bottle of red. And I was thinking, oh my God, this is so lovely. I mean, yeah, what a story. I mean, to, to go out for dinner with, with Lord Andrew, Andrew Lloyd Webber, it was just, it was incredible. And yeah, and him choose a beautiful and wine. And he, he chose yeah. all the wines, yeah. yeah. And he knows his wines, so yeah. it's nice. Yeah. I worked for Gordon Ramsay for six years and I remember he was probably like the first like celebrity guest like while I was working there so I was 21 years old and it was like the most incredible six years it's where I like learned so much right. of my craft and everything and we had Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber in for dinner I don't think he was a lord then and um I Gordon missed nothing. Like he, 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 and his head chef guy called Mark Askew, they they saw everything. And Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber ordered lobster to start with, and we used to top it with a big amount of caviar. Mm. And when you're taking the caviar, you have to be so careful because it's so expensive. And like, like if you got one single egg, you know, you would be in for a right rollicking. And I always remember I took it up there. I, I thought it was absolutely immaculate. It's about to go in the dining room. And there was a bead of caviar um, underneath the bowl. And put it this way, I got told off. Wow. And that's that's my from that's, Gordon. From Gordon. Yeah. Did he call you a C word or something? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my. I, I never met him, but that's my Lord Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber story. <laughs> Do you know, what? I absolutely love Gordon Ramsay. I really appreciate him, and I love watching his TV shows. But do you know what? Working for him must must have been must have been hard, especially when you're in a kitchen yeah. with him. I mean, he loves to swear, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's um, you know, people always ask me that you you know the, the Gordon that people see on television is is a Gordon Ramsay that's kind of like making television shows right. and doing all of that, but the Gordon in the kitchen like in any of the kitchens but like at Royal Hospital Road was as you say a phenomenal experience especially yeah, you know especially for me because yes it was extremely tough I can describe it as I went from like one kitchen 
and going to that kitchen was like the kitchen I was in before was a great kitchen, but it was almost as if that was like the Royal Marines. And then moving into Royal Hospital Road was like going SBS, SAS right. kind of. It was just it next was level. it was next level, but it, at the same time, it was um, an unbelievable experience. And yet, you would get you would kind of get the you know the the rollicking, but always followed up with why because. It's that expectation, isn't it? It's not like the, it's not sort of like other sectors where you can sort of say, oh, should we just disappear into another room and talk about why this isn't working and that you, customers are sat there paying a huge amount of money and it's, they're waiting. Yeah. So it's a, it is a hardcore environment, but it, yeah, it was amazing. Absolutely was. amazing. I bet you learned so much as well from him as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Him, all the team, it was, yeah, yeah. yeah incredible. So we've got, um, we'll just recap. We've got Cote de Boeuf. Cellarette puree with garlic, sweet potato mash, steamed spinach, a beautiful red wine jus. Um, I would probably make the, the same red wine that we're drinking with this, Duncan, is the same red wine we used to make that amazing sauce. What are we listening to? Um, I had the pleasure of working with Sir Elton John many years ago. I mean, what a career he's had. And he has produced some of the best songs that we all know. I mean, he is a true word of a legend. You know what yeah. I mean? He's he's just incredible and such an icon. Yeah. And for me, getting to work with him all those years ago was just like, I was. it was one of those pinch yourself moments. And still to this day, he gave us Blue our biggest number one around the world. I mean, it was, it was huge for us. Uh, thanks to him. Really put us on the map. So, in honour of Elton John, I would have to have one of his classics, something like Rocket Man, something like that, Brilliant. because it's just a great song, and I think everybody can appreciate and love a bit of Elton John. I love that song. It's uh, a great, great song, it's isn't a it? Great choice, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, um, and yeah, I think this, Superman this is... would love a bit of Rocket Man as well. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? he, of course, of course, he would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's fantastic. Right, we're going to move on to desserts, Duncan. Do you want to tell us what we're having? Right, so um, I'm being very self-indulgent here with what I like, but um, without thinking too much about my guests. But it's my dinner party and I can do what I want. So I'm going to choose a really, really lovely hot chocolate fondant with vanilla ice cream on top, melted into the hot chocolate sauce. You know, when you open the fondant and it just oozes out. Say fondant again. Fondant. Fondant. Is I it fondant mean, or fond? Is it fondant? No, it's no, no. It's it's, it's really correct. You say, you say it better than me. <laughs> like, but it has to be dark chocolate. Fond, fondant. Fondant. <laughs> I'm trying to be French. It has to be dark chocolate, though. I'm not a fan of the milk chocolate. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I can't stand milk chocolate. Also, it doesn't work as well with milk chocolate. Oh, really? So you're absolutely right. So the 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 best the best chocolate fondant. Fondant <laughs> is always for me is always kind of like anything from like sixty five percent cocoa upwards. So right. like generally like seventy seventy five percent cocoa because obviously you're going to be adding in sugar. You're going to yep. be adding in um, cream. So you've kind of got you've kind of got like sweetness there anyway. So it's uh, yeah, it's it, it works so brilliantly with um, like a nice bitter chocolate. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> It's just one of those desserts when you see on a menu, it's just instantly my eyes miss everything else and it just focuses on the chocolate. It's just, oh yeah, I've got to have a bit of chocolate. I love chocolate anyway, dark chocolate. Yeah. So when I'm at a restaurant and I see like a, a lovely, rich chocolate fondant, it makes me moist. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> just like a good fondant should be. Just right. like a good fondant. <laughs> moist and juicy. <laughs> <laughs> and what we what we what we have at you okay girls you all right <laughs> sorry the team have gone a bit funny they've got they've got a bit got a got a bit hot um it's because you're so can i i'm gonna say as we've gone through this now i'm really getting to getting to know you you know why i went with mexico why? Because when you rocked in here right. and I saw you in that, you had those really nice kind of rose tinted glasses on. It was just to cover up my puffy eyes. Not, not going to do that. You're, you're, you're <laughs> clearly still in great shape. Very, very Thank handsome. You. Right. I don't know why, but like you, like, I think, I think when I was, I think, so it's not so random. I've just got Club <laughs> Tropicana vibes when I look at it you. Give me some George Michael. Yeah, it's the pearl yeah. earring. It's, 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 it's the pearl earring. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. You, you're like, yeah, you're uh, you, oh. and that, that kind of like rough, rough sort of stubble, nice kind of, le yeah. You're, you're very, God yeah. rest his soul. Love a bit of George. 
bless him. Yeah, for everyone that you know that might not have seen Duncan for a while, can just let everyone know he's uh, he's in good nick. Oh, thank he's you. in good nick. I, I got to say, I, I got <laughs> trolled uh, in Marseille because it was in lockdown we filmed there, yeah. and I had this panic moment of of going, oh my god, I've put so much weight on during lockdown. I've got to go on national television in a huge show like Marseille. So I went and saw a doctor, and I was like can you just do something to my face to make me look a bit younger and make me look fresh? So he put a little bit of Botox in the middle of my forehead, right? Yeah. And I thought, went away, everything was great. <laughs> Got into the, uh, into the MasterChef bubble, staying in my apartment, and I look in the mirror, I wake up on the day of filming, and I had this weird Lord Farquaad eyebrow <laughs> shape going on, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, look at the state of my eyebrows, what am I going to do? Rang up the doctor and he goes, well, you need to come in and I, co- I need to correct the arch because it's too archy. I was like, I can't, I, I, I'm in the mastership, but I'm not allowed to leave, I, I'm stuck. So I'm panicking, 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 what am I going to do? So do you know what I did? Go on. I got a razor Yeah. and I shaved off the, the corners of my eyebrows in the middle because I thought, like that, they're going down and I look really weird. So I thought, right, I'll shave them off and I'll draw them back on like level. So when I'm frowning, I look at, I look all right. <laughs> now, we didn't have any hair and makeup in myself because we weren't allowed because of the whole COVID thing. There was no yeah. hair and makeup, no one to check you. So my best mate, Rita, who is thankfully in the same heat with me, I'm ringing her up. And I'm like, Rita, can you, have you got some eyebrow pencil or something? Because I've got to draw these. I've shaved them off too much. I've got to draw them back on. So thankfully, she dropped under my door. She dropped her, an eyebrow pencil. So I'm drawing them back on. Okay, great. I look at myself. I'm thinking, oh, no, they look really dark now. My eyebrows look really dark now. I'm drawing attention to this, 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 this dodgy bit of Botox I'm having. So I got the eyebrow pencil. And I'm starting to draw my beard on to make it dark. So I'm thinking to myself, Shut it will all blend up. in. It will all blend in. It will all be all right. <laughs> so... <laughs> I turn up to filming. I'm like, Rita, do I look all right? Yeah, yeah, you look good. I said, it's not too dark. I don't look a bit weird, do I? She's like, no, 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 it's fine. I was like, okay, great. She's a good mate, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get off and I start filming. And as the days progress, the Botox is getting stronger and stronger. And I'm thinking, oh my God, just try not to frown. Try and keep a real normal, natural looking face. So, <laughs> so this is going on. And I wake up one day and I'm like, I've just morphed into Rylan Clark. <laughs> I look like Blending Island, so I'm on there. And the jokes thing was, I was making jokes every day about my eyebrows to the to the camera crew. We were yeah. it was it became like the elephant in the room. So we were all laughing about it. And of course, in the edit, it, you didn't see any of that. So <laughs> I went on Twitter. What's Duncan James done to his face? Oh my god, he looks like Lord Farquhar. No, he looks like David Guest. No, he looks like Ryan Clark. I was getting. <laughs> David Guest. I know that was just the really, like, that was the cruelest one. Yeah, um, but Twitter. yeah, but do you know what? I did have a giggle, and I did watch it back, and I was just like, Duncan, what on earth were you doing? And I rang up my doctor, and I said, Do you know what? Thanks for that. Thanks for making me look really, really weird with that Botox. <laughs> Moral of the story is, never go on national television with Botox just beforehand. And since then. Thankfully, I've never put Botox back in my face and I never will because it just doesn't suit me. <laughs> and I feel... And my eyebrows are back to normal now. Yeah, Thank yeah, God yeah. they grew back. Yeah, well, you know, like like I've said, he's, he's, he's looking in great, great form, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And also as well, I feel there, Duncan, we've just had podcast magic. <laughs> We have just had podcast magic. Oh, God. Do you know what? My mother was like, what on earth do you think you'd look like, Duncan? I was like, do you know what, Mum? There was no hair and makeup there to, like, help me. I just was left to my own devices, which is never a good thing, is it? In a hot kitchen. In a hot kitchen. And when you drew drew on your beard on. I know, it was just melting away. (laughs) Do Do you know what? It was when they posted a picture of me and Lord Farquhar from uh, Shrek. It was just... I was like, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely all bastards, but that's genius. It was genius. <laughs> right, hot chocolate fondant. Anyway, moving back on, yeah, I think I need a chocolate. Hennessy with that right yeah, now. I think yeah. I need one right now. Nice actually. choice, nice choice. Nice yeah, that would go well with hot chocolate fondant. <laughs> anything anything with the chocolate dessert? Oh, you've got to have an espresso, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to end the meal. Every meal, I like a nice espresso. Yeah. If I'm feeling adventurous, I'll have it like a macchiato, but I do like a nice you know a nice espresso yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna you've put here vanilla ice cream yeah which is um, my favourite style of ice cream love it like a properly made vanilla ice cream what would you Nittle, do nittle a couple of tips real simple ones is and a lot of people know this now but sea salt really good mm. sea salt works brilliantly with a recipe like that Ooh. so once you've made the chocolate fondant mix yeah 
you just put in a little pinch of sea salt. Right. I basically keep tasting it, and you'll just notice this unbelievable contrast mm. in the, in the flavour, especially because you have got that little bit of sugar in it, sweet and salt, that bitter that bitter chocolate, and that sea salt. And then I personally, one of my favourite combinations is like chocolate and orange. I just think they mm. work brilliantly well together. So when that fondant just comes out the comes out the oven, let it rest. Just a couple of couple of little rasps. You probably used them in the celebrity master chef kitchen. You might even have one at home. But a microplane. No. They're though, like those really fine graters. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're good for anything like grating just garlic, grate fine. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit of orange mm. zest because obviously last minute you release all the oils from the orange, Ooh. little bit of zest on top, little bit of sea salt, absolutely blinding. Love that. Thank you for that tip. That's I all right. That's, really a, that's okay. That. That's just got me thinking about a chocolate fondant so badly now. I've got. A, do you know oh. what? I've got an amazing recipe for it. I'll send it to you. In fact, oh, we'll yeah. put it. We'll put it up on for this podcast. Um, and it's uh, we we call it a molu. So basically, it's some chocolate fondants require you to make a separate insert for the middle, so you the liquid oozing. Whereas this is just a soft center chocolate cake, mm. right? It's exactly like a fondant. You just cut into it. It oozes out vanilla ice cream, sea salt, orange. Oh. Next level. I need that recipe. You know, it's, it's 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 coming your way. Thank you, thank you. Drinks, cognac, Hennessy, and espresso. I think great. Yeah, I've, I I don't know what it is. I've always really enjoyed a nice cognac. Um, I've never been a massive drinker. I've never I've never just been a drinker. Really, yeah. I've just yeah. not. I've not. But I do enjoy after dinner a nice cognac. Um, I don't know what it is. Just like served in a warm glass. Yeah, it's just really nice. Yeah. They're amazing flavours because, you know, you, that richness of something like a cognac, that kind of slight nuttiness, mm. it, all of those things you've chosen just work brilliantly. And a lovely espresso as well. Like, I mean, just an espresso poured over vanilla ice cream like oh. affogato is, again, something I absolutely adore. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. And coffee and chocolate always goes well together. Brilliantly. Yeah. Absolutely brilliantly. Music. You got a bit of Queen, haven't you? Yeah. Freddie Mercury, legend, big fan. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. It's just a great song, and it gets everybody up. Everybody loves a bit of Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. It's very dramatic. Yeah. It's got an I thought a bit of drama in a song to end end the dinner party with. Um, I, I just think everybody can really really enjoy Queen, can't they? I mean, yeah. Freddie Mercury, God rest his soul. What an incredible artist. What a, just an enormous talent and what a voice yeah and queen you know that is just a genius piece of artwork that whole song it's just it's just pure art yeah it's just incredible and i know i'm massively late to the party but i only watched the film about a month ago and it's great it's, wasn't it it's incredible it's one of those it's one of those films where everyone kept saying watch it watch it queen means a lot to me because you know um that's kind of what was always on in our house and my mum and dad loved to dance together so they would always and they, I, it would always be to like um i want to break free yeah which is like probably my favorite queen song because it just reminds me of them and growing up as a as a kid so yeah i think that's a i think also bohemian rhapsody as you've put it like at the end yeah. of the dinner party. That's, yeah. that's yeah, fantastic. I've been very lucky to meet Brian May several, several times in, in my life. Um, he's been to see me in many shows that I've done and I've actually worked with him on stage. We've done stuff together. And he's just one of the nicest people I've ever met. So down to earth, so humble. Um, and from one of the biggest bands in the world ever. Yeah. You know, it's just... He's just lovely. And his wife, Anita, is just gorgeous as well. And um, yeah, I, I, I do really love Queen. I think they're incredible. And Adam Lambert taking the mantle for Freddie. He's got an amazing voice as well. Adam is just fantastic. And I really, I really love him as an artist as well. So, and it's just great that after, you know, Freddie's died, they've managed to keep going and reinvented themselves with Adam and, and, yeah. and continue to sell out yeah. arenas around the world. It's amazing. Yeah. No, it's phenomenal. So, Duncan, my last question to you, right, is in in my world, you know, like you have the Brit Awards yeah. and the mo you know the, the the sort of the, the most coveted awards in our in our industry. You know, for a chef to win a Michelin star is massive. It's the thing that you know all chefs truly strive for. Mm. So, if you had to award a artist, musician, a Michelin star, who would you choose? That's a very 
very difficult question because there's some incredible artists out there. Um, and my Michelin star would go to Lee Ryan. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Bless him. No, um, sorry, Lee. Uh, it would have to go to one of the, I think, the best British icons, uh, a fabulous singer, sold countless millions of records around the world. And her voice is just incredible. It has to be Adele. Yeah. Because she's amazing. amazing. I think, you know, Adele is such a great singer and I just really I don't know her songs are just it just really touch me just she's just amazing I think she deserves a Michelin star just because she's Adele and she's incredible well let me give you some let me give you some context first of all um I've spoken about Adele because I've got this thing that like music like artists and sort of chefs and food and music are so kind of linked right and you have one michelin star two michelin star and three michelin star so like three michelin star is like the absolute pinnacle right it's a restaurant or restaurant within a hotel or a place that is just absolutely at the very very top of its game it's become iconic so actually for me in my opinion adele would be three michelin stars right you know you know when it's like someone that is just the minute that they sing or they're just they're just in a complete league of their own that is like yeah. a, that is like a free mission star restaurant yeah yeah she is i i absolutely really really love her and you know somebody like you what a song what a tune yeah. isn't it it was just it's just amazing i mean i think everybody knows that so well now it's just one of those songs that everybody can sing along to and yeah, it's just amazing. And her first ever single, Chasing Pavements, what a great, yeah. what a great opening song. I think it was written by um, a writer called Ed White, who's I've worked with. He's an incredible songwriter. And I just remember hearing that song for the very first time and being like, who is this? Whose voice is this? And yeah. I was like, wow, who is this? And then, of course, she just blew up and became yeah. the, the Adele that we all know. Um, yeah. And she's gone on to win countless awards and all around the world and just, just she's just, yeah. Full respect. Love her. Duncan James, thank you so much. It's been, an, firstly, an absolute pleasure to meet you. And, like, I think your menu, your choices, your Thanks, music, Paul. everything, absolutely fantastic. It is certainly a dinner party I would love. It's <laughs> food I love. It's proper food. And, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I've really enjoyed it. It's been fun. You know, eyebrows and all. Yeah, it's eyebrows great. and all. Yeah. That is that is <laughs> podcast magic right there. Oh, we love a bit like, of podcast magic. <laughs> thank you, mate. My pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. having me. No, thank pleasure. You. Thank you.